Welcome to this loose watercolour tutorial working from our imaginations and thank you to Sarah from my Patreon membership for inspiring this tutorial and to Steve Mitchell from the Mind of Watercolour YouTube channel for inspiring Sarah. Let's get started. I am using cold pressed paper and I'm using a flat one inch brush and I'm going to wet the paper quite randomly. So it's going to be wet and dry areas. For a full list of all the materials I'm using, please see the description below. So as you can see here, I'm even dripping some of the water on. This is going to be very experimental and I'm just going to see what happens. You can't go wrong in this stage, just have fun. So I've mixed up some Prussian blue and Payne's grey and as you can see, I'm spattering the paint on with my size 10 brush, wet in wet, and I'm going to continuously tilt as well and just get that paint moving. I'm open to whatever happens. And as you can see there, I already had colors in my palette, so I'm actually using leftover paint. So if you wanna try out this, you could try this after another painting. Don't clean your palette and just use the colors that you've got there and just experiment. And maybe use the back of an old painting as well. So as you can see there, I put on some dark color, added lots of water and just tilt. All of those sort of marks there could turn into something amazing. And I would sort of equate this to looking at clouds. And I've looked at clouds all my life, I'm sure you have. But in those clouds, sometimes you'll see something, a face or a tree or an animal. And it's kind of abstract, but also it's quite magical. And that's where I'm aiming for here. So I'm not trying to paint anything. I want this sort of experiment for want of a better word, to come up with something like clouds. Even though I'm not painting clouds here, I'm just allowing the watercolor to do its own thing. So if I did this again, maybe with different colors, etc., it would look totally different, of course. So it's very random. And as you can see here, I'm using some Payne's Gray. I've added a touch of pink into that Payne's Gray. It's a little bit darker, this color. And again, I'm tilting. I don't know what's up or what's down. I'm just going with my instincts, just seeing what happens. So using the flat brush here and just painting on some colors, wet on dry. There's a bit of Payne's Gray with a pinch of yellow. Again, whatever's in my palette. This paint is slightly thicker. The thicker the paint, the darker the color because it covers the light and white of the paper. I'm using the edge of the brush there to make marks. And again, just going with my instincts. I might spritz all this away. I'm just going to sort of just see how it looks aesthetically, abstractly, without sort of having it to look like something for now. The next stage, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make it look like something. This stage, you can be free and experiment. I'm spattering water here, and that will create some light and textures. Again, you can tilt that and that would disappear. So it's just to see what happens. And it's quite a nice way of a warm up for a watercolor painting as well. So it's got a lot of pluses painting like this. So I'm spattering at the top there and I'm just sort of painting some lines here using my size four brush, some pale lines. So using all those elements that you get in a painting, lights and darks, shapes, lines, textures, but it's all very abstract. Again, spattering a little bit more water here um, just with my size 10 brush, again, just to see what happens. And you can see there where I've spattered the water before, it's really pushed the paint and created lighter marks and cauliflowers. So I'm going to allow my painting to dry. Once the painting is dry, have a good look at your painting. Try and find something magical. You may not be able to find anything, but um, if you turn it upside down, you might be able to see something. So let's turn the painting upside down. So it just gives you a different perspective. And what I can see here is a kind of a dark tree trunk right in the middle there with lots of beautiful light, maybe for some water, misty light. There's certainly lots of light coming through the top there. It could be trees and lots of foliage in the foreground. So I've decided to go with the painting upside down. So there's an important lesson here. Try to remember this when you're painting that first sort of abstract stage, letting go, being loose. 
So don't try to paint anything representational. Really let yourself go. Let your imagination go and really enjoy painting in watercolour. So that will allow you freedom in that first stage. Another really important tip is try to, at this sort of first stage when you're beginning with this sort of style of painting from your imagination, try not to use too many colours, especially primary colours, blue, red and yellow, because sometimes when you're spritzing and tilting, etc., spattering the painting can get quite muddy to stop that try to kind of keep to yellows and blues and greens and greys or reds pinks blues and violets sort of one side of that sort of color circle if you mix the yellows blues and reds you could end up with a lot of mud and brown so I hope that's helpful so I'm working upside down and I've decided just to paint some tree trunks so this is all going to be foliage here and the bottom part of the painting will be some water and reflections. So I'm using Payne's Grey with my size 10 round brush and I'm painting some very dark tree trunks. And what will be quite nice, it's against that very light sort of sky behind, um, which is quite nice. So I'm just softening the edge here with a clean damp brush to sort of bury the bottom of the tree trunk into the sort of foliage there. So I'm trying to just build up something here. I can see kind of lots of trees and I'm just keeping it all really simple. So even when you're at this stage and you're sort of making sense of it, your painting is evolving all the time. So just keep a very, very open mind. It might be tricky to do this. So maybe try this in your sketchbooks. It takes the pressure off. And you can just do a small painting to begin with just to get the idea of it. Again, the most important thing is to keep an open mind. So I've just sort of painted a bit of a dark there with the Payne's Grey along the riverbank. And I'm just diluting now with water to soften and dilute that sort of top part there. So I am painting some branches in the gaps there using my size four brush with a slightly watered down Payne's Grey colour there. So these sort of branches and tree trunks look a little bit further away and the darker tree trunks are coming forward and I'll create depth in my painting, just painting in these gaps. So just carrying on here, sort of dropping in some clean water and softening the edge of the riverbank there with a clean damp brush, using a little bit more of the Payne's Grey now. And I'm painting in a reflection with my size four brush, sort of damp into damp, directly below the trees there. So it's reflecting those trees with very sort of wriggly lines to create the look of movement in the water and just softening with a damp brush there just to soften that back so it looks a bit more natural. Adding a little bit more of the marks there, linear marks, working my way down to the bottom of the painting with my size four brush. Adding a touch more of the paints grey and painting damp, so the paint's thicker, damp into wet to create the look of little grasses just at the edge of the riverbank there. And this really does make the water look like water by keeping it lighter and painting in reflections. I'm just adding a really pale wash here and just sort of bringing my brush up and down to look like lots of sort of 
very thin tree trunks and then adding a slightly darker tonal value and painting in some more trees here in the foreground pretty much using that Payne's grey with a pinch of the Prussian blue and just painting these freely in again it's from my imagination I always find painting from the side especially tree trunks and branches easier turning my painting like this so I'm just going to carry on now painting more tree trunks and branches here and there especially in the lighter gaps So as you can see, I'm just building up using this Payne's Grey with the pinch of the Prussian Blue. Again, you could be using your own colours and you could be designing your own painting. But I'm just building up in a traditional watercolour method, working light to mid-tones to dark tones, adding details. But this is all pretty much wet on dry here and I'm sort of painting in the lighter gaps. So the sort of darker marks that I made right at the beginning is the sort of foliage, just painting in some grasses there as you saw as well, and just sort of bringing this painting to life, painting in some more reflections using a kind of a wriggly line with gaps, so it kind of gives the illusion of a reflection. Try to make sure you have it directly below your tree, and if the tree is leaning to the right, you want your reflection going in the same way, not the opposite direction. It can happen so easily. I'm just building a few more darks here with the reflections on top. You can do this either wet on dry or damp into damp. Adding some very dilute wash here just to make it slightly darker sort of foliage spattering as well. So using the Prussian blue with a pinch of yellow and the Payne's grey. So all these colours are quite harmonious all in that sort of colour sort of bracket where they're kind of greys and blues and sort of blue greens etc so um, it creates quite a nice sort of harmonious painting so spattering some darker paint here the Prussian blue with the Payne's grey and just softening some of those marks so it creates some texture in and around the focal point which is that very sort of dark sort of large tree that attracted me to painting this painting upside down which is now the right way up so continuing on here, painting another tree trunk right across all of that light area there using my size four round brush.
I've decided to paint a tree on the left hand side here in the foreground so it's coming down lower rinsing my brush just wetting this area here and I'm going to add that sort of very grey green colour the paint's grey with some yellow and just painting this wet into wet building up the detail here and then softening and lightening that wash with a clean damp brush and just painting this tree now in the foreground and softening the bottom with a clean damp brush and I've decided actually to bring it right the way down so I'm making decisions all the, t all the, all the time from my imagination so I'm bringing that right down into the foreground that will create depth in the painting it is a little bit to the left here but I'm going to see if I can work with it I'm taking a risk but it doesn't matter it's all an experiment just to see what happens so I'm making the tree trunk a little bit larger top and bottom so it really brings it forward and still using the Payne's Grey the Prussian Blue with a pinch of yellow and now I'm going to paint some branches coming from that tree trunk coming up to the foliage there using my size 4 round brush so building up the detail here smoothing out the edges So painting in the gaps here, building up the information, painting paler branches, more branches on this tree here, on the other side of the riverbank, using my size 4 brush, wet on dry, painting in a couple of tree trunks here, um, because you can see a couple of gaps or a couple of dark tree trunks just above, so I thought I'd sort of mirror that and paint the tree trunks coming down to the bottom there and just sort of varying the colours dropping in a little bit of darker paint there and just varying the tonal values and then adding some branches and it sort of creates quite a nice atmospheric effect having that sort of light and mid-tones there not all just one tonal value Again, I've turned my painting to the side, painting wet on dry, using my size 8 round brush this time for the larger tree trunk and just painting a slightly darker tone of value as well. I'm just building up on the detail. just wetting this area with some water and I'm going to spatter here to create some soft textures using pretty much the Payne's Grey and that's wet into wet and a little bit of wet on dry here and there as well using my hand to stop the spatter going on my table and using the tip of my brush to create some textures as well using those spatter marks and extending them, creating the look of sort of darker foliage here and there, pretty much here, wet on dry. Adding a few more reflections now of the trees with that sort of 
open ended sort of wriggle wet on dry using the Payne's Grey with my size four brush directly under the tree or going in the direction of the tree where the tree is leaning. I'm just painting some grasses here at the edge of the riverbank with my size 4 brush, again using the Payne's Grey mixed with the Prussian Blue, keeping those colours harmonious, adding this little bit of detail here and it really sort of creates the sort of barrier between the water and land really. So just adding a few more branches here. Um, to this larger tree that's in the foreground, really sort of pulling that tree into the picture, especially because it's so far on the left. I want to kind of bring it in so it doesn't look like it's falling off the edge. Well, that's my theory anyway. So just extending these branches. And you probably want to make something like this a bit darker to pull it forward away from those middle distant trees as well. But there's a real tangle of branches here, which is lovely. And I'm just sort of quickly painting some very thin branches. There's lots and lots of detail here because it's more of a foreground tree. I'm sort of adding to that detail. And now I'm using my plastic card to lift off some of those darker grasses to create lighter grasses. And you want to do that when the paint is damp. I always like to finish my painting with a spatter. So I'm spattering with my size 8 brush a little bit of Payne's Grey on and around that water's edge and grasses. And I'm darkening up the front part of the water using some Prussian blue with a pinch of Payne's Grey. So it just makes it a little bit darker here, a little bit more Payne's Grey right at the edge here to create depth in my painting and to finish off my painting. So here is the finished painting. I really hope this inspires you to have a go at working from your imagination. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to support the content that I publish here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to weekly exclusive tutorials add free content, downloadable line drawings, and you can cancel anytime. And you can find more details about the membership in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Happy painting from your imaginations. Bye for now.